They called him the Iceman, and for decades between the 1950s and the 1980s, Richard Kuklinski more than lived up to his reputation. This cold-blooded killer allegedly murdered dozens, if not hundreds of people in gruesome ways, sometimes for the mob, sometimes for fun, then froze the bodies to obscure the victim's time of death and confuse the police. After he was finally arrested in 1986, Kuklinski wasn't shy about bragging. He ultimately claimed to have killed between 100 and 200 people, using everything from ice picks to crossbows to chainsaws. He even says he would tie people up inside a cave and let swarms of rats eat them alive. But how much of Kuklinski's bone-chilling stories are actually true? Little evidence of his alleged crimes has ever been found and some of the mobsters he supposedly killed for later said they had no idea who he even was. Plus, as he began to do more and more interviews over the years, Kuklinski's claims got increasingly outlandish. He even once said that he was behind the infamous murder of Teamster President Jimmy Hoffa in 1975. Nevertheless, Kuklinski was convicted of five murders, and police have linked him to as many as 15, with many of his victims indeed dying in truly horrific ways. By the time he himself died in prison in 2006, Kuklinski had repeatedly and gleefully spoken of his murderous exploits, both those that really happened and those that he likely made up, with HBO documentarians, writers, criminologists, and more. Through it all, the truth can be hard to discern. But what is certain is that, regardless of his actual body count, the Iceman remains one of the most terrifying figures in modern history. You're listening to History Uncovered, brought to you by the digital publisher All That's Interesting, where we explore the uncharted corners of the natural world and the world past. I'm All That's Interesting staff writer Kalina Fraga. Today, we're diving into the chilling exploits of Richard Kuklinski, the so-called Iceman Killer. From the very beginning, Richard Kuklinski grew up in a violent environment that foreshadowed his path towards murder. Born in Jersey City, New Jersey on April 11, 1935, he was raised in an abusive household in which both his parents beat him and his siblings. His older brother, Florian, allegedly died after being beaten by their father, although their parents claimed he had just fallen down the stairs. It didn't take long for Kuklinski to turn to violence himself. As a boy, he tortured and killed neighborhood cats, and after dropping out of school in the 8th grade, he reportedly beat a local bully to death, then removed his teeth and fingers to prevent his identification, all by the age of 14. That killing, he later claimed, made him feel empowered, though, as with so many Kuklinski stories, it's unclear if it really happened at all. But if it did, then that murder was Kuklinski's first, and far from his last. He later told stories about setting the car of a young policeman on fire simply because the officer annoyed him, beating a man to death with a pool cue, and beating someone else to death with a hammer. However, it's difficult to know if these stories from his youth are true or just the result of Kuklinski's overactive imagination. In Kuklinski's telling, at least, his desire to kill only got stronger as he got older. He claims he later took his violent urges across the Hudson River into New York in the 1950s and started murdering homeless men in Manhattan. Sometimes he killed people who annoyed him or he felt had slighted him. Sometimes he killed just to kill. Throughout, Kuklinski's methods were allegedly so varied that the police didn't even realize that one person was behind the spate of deaths. He reportedly shot, stabbed, strangled, poisoned, and bludgeoned the poor souls who crossed his path. Police, apparently, assumed that homeless people were simply killing each other. Meanwhile, Kuklinski dabbled in robbery, hijacking, and selling pornography. And, as he tells it, he soon crossed paths with the Mafia. How 
if at all, did Richard Kuklinski get involved with the mob. Stories differ. Some claim that he owed the mob money, but then impressed mafiosos by how well he took a beating. Others say that he earned the mob's respect by unflinchingly killing a random man when infamous mob killer Roy DeMeo told him to do so. And some claim that Kuklinski never worked for the mob at all. Assuming the mob stories are true, then Kuklinski allegedly started carrying out murder contracts for the mafia. By that point, Kuklinski weighed 300 pounds and stood 6 foot 5, which helped to make him a formidable and fearsome hitman. Working for the Gambino crime family, among others, he allegedly completed hits with such enthusiasm that his associates called him the devil himself. Because Kuklinski claims to have killed hundreds of people, exactly what he did and who he did it for, if anyone, can be difficult to tease out. But he seemed to be especially skilled at disposing of bodies, allegedly removing his victims' teeth and fingers and dumping their bodies in places like mine shafts or the Hudson River. According to the New York Times, Kuklinski also infamously froze some of his victims' bodies so that the police couldn't tell when exactly he killed them. That is, of course, how he got his nickname, the Iceman. Kuklinski later claimed that he picked up the technique from another contract killer named Robert Prongue, whom the police allegedly nicknamed Mr. Softy because he had a day job as an ice cream seller. Kuklinski once said, quote, Prongue taught me a lot, but he was extremely crazy. He'd go into these neighborhoods and sell ice cream to the kids, then maybe kill one of their fathers, unquote. While countless killings claimed by Kuklinski remain unverified, there are some murders that police were able to tie directly to him. He shot a man named George Malibrand over a debt in 1980 and then stuffed his body into a barrel, which was later found in New Jersey. That same year, he also killed a New York City police detective named Peter Calabro, allegedly after being ordered to do so by Sammy the Bull Gravano, the infamous Gambino family underboss who later testified against John Gotti. The next year, in 1981, he killed his business partner, Louis Mesguet. Kuklinski later admitted to police that he'd shot Mesguet, then frozen his body for two years before dumping it in a park in Orangetown, New York. And the year after that, in 1982, Kuklinski also killed two criminals who he teamed up with to steal cars. Apparently, he killed both with one of his favorite weapons, cyanide. Later, Kuklinski would wax poetic about the poison, saying, quote, It's quiet, it's not messy, it's not noisy. You can spray it in someone's face, and they go to sleep, unquote. Kuklinski also killed a pharmacist named Phil Hoffman that year by beating him to death with a tire iron after his gun jammed. Apparently, Hoffman had helped Kuklinski get cyanide in the past. Kuklinski also claimed to have killed Roy DeMeo in 1983, although authorities doubt his claim. And though many of his claims are in doubt, it was what Kuklinski later said about his purported murders and what others said about him that truly made him infamous. He later described the moment he murdered people by saying, quote, I would see the blankness come over them. I'd watch them die. I just didn't shoot them and walk away. I saw the surprise, the shock, the blank. They're gone. All I saw was my reflection. But that's it. Unquote. According to retired special agent Dominic Polyphrone of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, who later helped take Kuklinski down, Kuklinski would do whatever the mafia told him to. No kill was too messy or too gruesome for him. Polyphrone said, quote, Kuklinski told me that sometimes the mob bosses wanted the hits to look bad and send a message. He said he cut a guy's tongue out and stuck it up his rectum. Another time, he stuffed a bird in the mouth of a guy he killed. Others wanted it nice and easy, clean, unquote. Indeed, Kuklinski was a natural-born killer, and he knew it. Of his many murders, Kuklinski later boasted, quote, I was very smooth, able to hurt somebody at any given time with no remorse, and I could do it over and over again without it bothering at all, unquote. At another time, he said, quote, I'm the furthest thing from a nice guy. I am what you call a person's nightmare. Because of the way I project myself, people think they can get by, and then, all of a sudden, when they wake up, it's too late. They already hit the stop sign, and that's a dead stop, unquote. All the while, Richard Kuklinski lived an outwardly normal life. He had a wife, Barbara, and three children. But though the Kuklinskis seemed like an all-American family, his violent nature frequently bled into his home life, 
He broke his wife's nose three times, tried to smother her with a pillow, and once tried to run her over with his car. And though Kuklinski was a killer hiding in plain sight, he liked to talk, and his big mouth and boastful attitude would ultimately lead to his downfall. Richard Kuklinski's killing spree finally came to an end in 1986, when he was taken down by an undercover operation orchestrated by the New Jersey Attorney General's Office and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Polly Frome went undercover as Dominic Provenzano, a drug-dealing criminal. After months of hanging around Kuklinski's haunts, Kuklinski asked Polly Frome if he could help him get his favorite murder weapon, cyanide. As the relationship developed, Kuklinski bragged frequently about his exploits, He talked about poisoning people's food, shooting people, and hiding bodies in freezers in order to mask their time of death. Kuklinski even told Polyphrone how he used nasal spray as a murder weapon by mixing it with cyanide and then spraying it in his victims' faces. According to Polyphrone, Kuklinski told him, quote, Cyanide is beautiful. Nobody looks for it. By the time they get an antidote, they can kiss their ass goodbye because there's nothing they can do, unquote. By December 17, 1986, Polifron and his team had enough evidence to arrest Kuklinski. In 1988, he was found guilty of killing four men, and in 2003, guilty of killing a fifth, Peter Calabro, the police detective. For the first four murders, Kuklinski was sentenced to consecutive life sentences. For Calabro's murder, he got an additional 30 years. But Kuklinski didn't live out the rest of his life quietly while behind bars. He gave interviews to psychiatrists, criminologists, journalists, and writers, and participated in two in-depth HBO documentaries about his life and crimes. During those interviews, Kuklinski claimed that he killed Teamster President Jimmy Hoffa, and that he'd probably killed over 100 people. In one such interview, he said, quote, It's not less than 200 people. I killed basically 100 people when I was a young man before I even knew anybody. Too much, unquote. And he casually offered gruesome details of his kills, claiming in another interview that, quote, I used to have a thing where I would take somebody into a cavern or a cave, whatever you want to call it. I would tie them up or tape them, their hands and their feet together, and then I would leave them there. And I'd leave a camera on, and rats used to eat them." Unquote. After decades in prison, however, Richard Kuklinski's health started to fail. He died on March 5, 2006, due to a rare inflammation of the blood vessels. But Kuklinski, in his dying days, suspected that something more devious was at work. The man, who always loved to kill with cyanide, apparently told his family that he believed he'd been poisoned, possibly because he was supposed to testify against mobster Sammy Gravano. Today, Richard Kuklinski stands out as one of the most terrifying killers, regardless of his true body count of all time. He liked to kill, and he was good at it. But when an interviewer asked him if he would refer to himself as an assassin, the Iceman demurred. He said, quote, Assassin. It sounds so exotic. I was just a murderer, unquote. At best, this quote-unquote just a murderer killed four or five people. At worst, he may have murdered as many as 200, stalking the streets of New Jersey and New York, filled with the irrepressible desire to kill almost anyone who crossed his path. Thanks for listening to History Uncovered. I'm History Uncovered's producer, Kit Westneat. If you like the show, help others find us by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And be sure to follow the All That's Interesting and History Revealed pages on Facebook and Real History Uncovered on Instagram. Make sure you don't miss out on the new episodes and subscribe to the History Uncovered podcast. And keep up with our latest stories at allthatsinteresting.com. If you have a question about the show or just want to say hi, feel free to call us at 929-526-3029 or email us at podcast at allthatsinteresting.com. This podcast is part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. Visit airwavemedia.com to listen and subscribe to their other fine shows like Legends of the Old West and Redacted History. Until next time, keep exploring.